exalt the King. Hallelujah, Jesus, we praise you. We praise you, Lord. We praise your holy and mighty name. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Lord, we exalt you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody say there's no other name. There is no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How many have come to help me exalt the Lord tonight? Amen. Are you glad to be able to worship the Lord? Come on, it's an honor. It is an honor to come to the house of the Lord. Amen. When you read in Scripture how that that veil was ripped from the top to the bottom. Amen. And we all have access into the presence of the Lord. Oh, that ought to make you want to rejoice. That ought to make you want to shout praise God. In the Old Testament, the only person that could go beyond the veil was that high priest. Hallelujah. But now, all of us can experience the presence of the Lord. You can feel the glory of the Lord. You can be in that presence of the Almighty God. Hallelujah. We thank you. We praise you. We exalt you. Lord, we exalt you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So good to be in the house of worship. One more time. Two times on Sunday. And here you are. Hallelujah. Why don't you look around at those around you and just wave and smile. Those that are watching live stream, thank you so much for joining us and worshiping the Lord with us tonight. And all of you that are here, if you are a visitor, you're our guest, we're very glad to have you. We want you to feel at home. We welcome you. Most of all, we want you to feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. That's what it's all about. Amen. We can all go anywhere and find a place to get emotional. But it's more than being emotional. It's being in the presence of the Lord and worshiping the Lord with all of our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. Everything that hath breath. He said, praise ye the Lord. If we're breathing, we need to be praising the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Going to give you an opportunity to give in the offering and in the tithes tonight. We're going to pray the blessing of the Lord to be upon it. Lord, we ask you to bless the offerings, the tithes. We ask you to bless each and every one. We thank you so much for blessing us over and over and over, even though we don't deserve it. We thank you, Lord, and we give to you gladly without being grudging in our heart. We're thankful for your presence. And everybody say in Jesus' name, Lord, bless you. Come bring your offering, tithes, move around, shakes, shake at least three or four people's hands before you go back. Amen. <laughs>
Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. You should feel freedom right now. You should feel liberty right now. You should feel like you're in a place that if you wanted to clap your hands as loud as you can, you have the freedom to do that. Amen. If you want to lift up your hands, you have the freedom to do that. If you feel like jumping up and down, you have the freedom to do that. Hallelujah. Come on. This is the house of the Lord. The place where we worship God in spirit and in truth.
Some of y'all that y'all been coming in here and you've noticed a change just since last week. You see some chairs sitting over there. Now those chairs ain't for something weird, okay? It's not we're gonna put somebody in them and spin them around or anything. We're gonna be having cameras set up on those platforms there. We're trying to improve our live stream, give them a better presentation as far as what they're seeing. And so we're gonna add some cameras here and they'll be on these platforms there. And of course, the person with the cameras, they'll need a chair too. So I just wanted to put that out there. I, I know Brother Joel, he was teasing somebody and said something about skating or something. I, I didn't understand that part. <laughs> but you know how people are curious or wondering, <laughs> what is this? Amen, but we, we want to do everything we can to, we're always looking for ways that we can improve and, and uh, so we, we want to improve our live stream. Believe it or not, we have a large live stream audience. When we go on Facebook and look at how many people come in watching live stream, and then if I go onto our website and see the numbers of people that come in, there's a large live stream audience that are watching the, the, the service. And so we want to do everything we can to try to make that uh, better and and so that's what we're doing we're going to have two different cameras over here and of course they'll we have the main camera back there but they can switch from whichever one they want to have the view and um, one of the things we're wanting to, to try to happen is whenever you're watching live stream there's certain places in here when we we're preaching and it, and it looks like the preacher just goes into the dark and so I'm hoping that this is going to improve that. Of course, the next thing, then you need a little bit more lighting in this area. Right down here for whenever we get off platform, we go down there, the live stream audience, it's it's kind of, I, raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. I'm up here just mumbling or you, you see sometimes you can see it and then it's, it's like he kind of goes into the dark somewhere and that's got to do with the one camera that's way back there and also, of course, your, your lighting. I'm one of those guys that I'm always under what needs to be and whenever we was building this church and they were wanting to put lights, they were wanting to have more and I'm saying, oh no, we don't need that, we don't need that. Well, as time goes by, it's like, okay, I know what they were talking about. Those people that were talking to me about it were saying you, you need more lighting than what you have. And so anyway, that's what those are is to help on the live stream presentation. Amen. Thank God for our crew back there. They're all working hard. Look back there, give them all a hand. Running the sound running the media, trying to keep up with the words on the songs. All of this takes a crew, it takes a lot of people, a lot of work, and we thank them for what they're doing. Good to have our assistant pastor. My, he just does a great job in teaching and preaching, and we love Brother Lewis very much. Brother Lewis, come on, preach to us. Praise God. Amen, I like what I feel in the house tonight. Amen. I said, I like the spirit that I feel in the house tonight. Amen. And it goes right along with what I'm feeling. This morning, I was studying. I was getting ready for tonight. I was sitting in my office. Brother, you can turn the monitor down just a little bit. Amen. I was sitting in my office, and I got so excited, I jumped up out of my chair, and I did a little Holy Ghost jig right in the middle of my office. And, man, I was feeling the Holy Ghost. And what I didn't know is while I had been studying, the dog had climbed under the 
under the desk. And when I jumped up and started doing the jig, the dog come out and was wondering what was going on. I said, you might as well get with it because we're going to worship. Hallelujah. Amen. And I said to this church, amen, if you hadn't got with it yet, amen, you might as well get ready. Hallelujah. To get with it. You might as well get ready to get another refilling of the Holy Ghost, to get a fresh touch of the gospel. If you've got your Bibles, open up to the book of Isaiah 55. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you tonight, my title is A Banquet of Blessing. Amen. We're preaching about the Holy Ghost tonight. Ho, everyone that thirsteth. Every, that ho, he's just trying to get everybody's attention. Hey, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which satisfieth not. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Amen. Boy, our society has an underappreciation for fatness. Amen. The Bible says, let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call. Now thou is not you. Thou, it's talking about Jesus. Amen. It's talking about the Messiah. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God for the Holy One of Israel for he hath glorified thee Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the word of God. Amen. That quick word, hallelujah, that stirs life in us, Lord. And I thank you for the Holy Ghost, Lord. I pray that the Spirit would have its way in this house. Lord, that you would continue to move up and down these pews, God, through these aisles, oh Lord, and touch every heart and life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You can sit down. Amen. But you don't have to stay sitting down. Amen. I just want, I'll, I'll second what Brother Martin said. Amen. You ought to feel freedom to clap. Amen. You ought to feel freedom to run the aisles. Amen. Whatever. Amen. If you have not received the Holy Ghost tonight, if you have never received the Holy Ghost speaking with other tongues tonight, amen. Tonight, you can receive that gift. Amen. You don't have to wait till I'm done preaching. If something starts moving in your heart, amen, you can just run on up, throw your hands up, and God will fill you. Amen. If you need a blessing in this house tonight, you don't have to wait till the preaching's over. You don't have to wait till I say, you may come to the front. You can get your blessing now. Hallelujah. My goodness. Amen. Folks, we have, you know, you know what it's like to, 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 to feel the excitement and, and the honor of receiving an invitation. Amen. To be invited to someone's house. Amen. To come into their living room, to go into their kitchen, sit down at their table, and enjoy a meal prepared by their hands. Amen. That's an exciting thing. Kids love to get invited to a party. Amen. Kids love to be invited to somebody else's house. And we adults, we love that too. Amen. There's just something that is gratifying when someone says, Brother, won't you come to our house? Won't you come in my living room and sit down on my couch and make yourself at home? And and let me serve you and do for you. Amen. And it's especially nice to get an invitation to the home of somebody who's a good cook. Amen. A particularly good host or a good hostess, it makes you feel good. Let me tell you, Jesus uh, uh, had, had died. He had rose again. And, and the disciples decided they were going fishing. And they fished all night and they didn't catch anything. And when I look at the disciples in the Bible, I'm starting to think that they weren't very good fishermen, that it didn't take much for them to leave their nets and follow Jesus because every time they're fishing, it says they fished all night and caught nothing. They did a lot of fishing but not much catching. And uh, so they had been fishing all night, and uh, as they near the, the, the shore, there's a man on the shore, and they didn't know it was Jesus, and he called out. He said, children, have you caught anything? And they said, no, 
we have not. And he told them to cast their net out on the other side. And so that's exactly what they did. And, of course, they, they caught a great catch of fishes, uh, a fish. And at that point, Simon Peter realizes that it was Jesus. And he said, it's the master. It's the Lord. And he dove off into the water and began swimming for the shore. And by and by, the rest of the disciples get to the shore. And they come to where Jesus is. And Jesus has got a fire going. And he's got fish on the fire. And he simply says this, come and dine. Amen. One of my favorite hymns growing up is that old hymn that says, Come and dine. And the words say this, Jesus has a table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites his chosen people, come and dine. Amen. With his manna he doth feed and supplies our every need. It's sweet to sup with Jesus all the time. Come and dine, the master calls. Come and dine. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who fed the multitudes and turned the water into wine to the hungry calleth now. Come and dine. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, you have received a divine invitation to come and to dine. Amen. You have been issued, amen, a divine invitation to a heavenly banquet. Isaiah 55 and 1. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Ladies and gentlemen, he, he emphasizes something in here. He says come four times. Come. Amen. Come to the waters. Come if you have no money. Come and buy and eat. Come. Amen. That's to emphasize that this is a sincere invitation. You know, sometimes people ask you and you're like, well, they don't really mean it. They don't really want me to come. They're just being polite. How many of you have ever felt that way? Amen. Yeah, you got an invitation, but you felt like it was issued out of uh, politeness and, uh, and not wanting to uh, uh, hurt your feelings. But lest you think that the master is just trying to be polite, he says it four times. Come, 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 come. Hallelujah, you are invited to a banquet. Amen, and that invitation is universal. Come on, somebody, it's universal. Everyone, come. If you don't have any money, don't worry about it. Come, amen, and it's a banquet of blessings. Amen, and there are three things in particular that are served in, at this banquet. That we see. These are the blessings of the banquet, folks. When you read Isaiah 55 and 1, there's three things that are listed. He says this come, and everyone who thirsts, come for the water. Amen. That's a blessing in this banquet. Come for the water, come for the wine, and come for the milk. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about yet. Let me tell you, folks, I'm excited, amen, about the blessings of this banquet. There's water for the thirsty. There's wine, amen, and there's milk, amen. And if you look up, um, you know, if you start studying about water, you're going to find that water is necessary for life. Amen. When there's water at the banquet, understand that that refers to life. The American Museum of Natural History, their webpage says of water, all living things from tiny cyanobacteria to giant blue whales need water. Amen. To survive. Without water, life as we know it would not exist. And life exists wherever there is water. Amen. I said wherever there is water, there is life. Amen. If there's no water, there's no life. That's why every time you see NASA searching the stars, they, they say, you know what? We're looking for water. Amen. We're, just, we're looking into the heavens. We're looking to Mars. We're looking to the moon because we're trying to find water. Because wherever water is, there is life. Amen. There is a phenomenon known as the flowering desert. Places like Death Valley, places like the Atacama Desert in Chile. Amen. There's a, there, there's a, uh, a phenomenon, and it's called super bloom. When you go to these places, they are dead. They are dry. Amen. Death Valley's the lowest and, and probably one of the hottest places on earth. The Atacama Desert is one of the absolute driest places on earth. They send astronauts there to train for missions to Mars and the moon. Amen. It is a dry, barren land. Amen. It looks dead and it looks dry, but let a little water begin to flow and something starts happening. Amen. Go up. When you get home, go to Google and type in Super Bloom. 
and look at the pictures of the desert and what happens to that dead, dry, thirsty land when a little rain starts coming. And that, that dead, dry place explodes, amen, into life. It blooms into an explosion of brilliant color. Hundreds of different uh, species of flowers appear when the water shows up. Come on, folks, there's water at the banquet. Amen. I said there's water at this heavenly banquet. John 7, 37, in the last and great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, if any, there's that universal call, is anybody thirsty? Amen. It doesn't matter who you are, rich, poor, male, female, you know, whatever race, it doesn't matter for where you're coming from. If any man is thirsty... Let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. Now what is that? Amen. That's the Holy Ghost. Verse 39. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Amen. The message that Jesus gave to that crowd on that day was, If you're thirsty, come, and out of your belly is going to flow a river of living water. Out of your belly is going to flow a river of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Folks, the Holy Ghost is a spirit of life. Amen. It is a river of living water. It is the water of life. Amen. When you got the Holy Ghost, you didn't just get a ticket to heaven. Amen. You've got something in you that began welling up and bubbling up that is full of life. Amen. It is resurrection power. Amen. The Holy Ghost brings life into the dead places. Amen. When you get the Holy Ghost, your desert becomes a fertile land. Amen. The Holy Ghost brings a super bloom into your life, an explosion of brilliant color instead of desolation. Amen. That's what the Holy Ghost. Oh, do I have to have the Holy Ghost? Forget Forget your have to. I want it. I need it. I need that river of living water in me. I don't want to be dead. I don't want to be dried up. I don't want to be withering on the vine. Amen. But I need an explosion of life. Amen. Welling up in me and out of me. Amen. I want to be full of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Ghost is living water. Amen. Do you ever get to that place where you're really thirsty? Amen. That's good. Amen. All that shouting, I got a little thirsty. Amen. But I'm feeling better now. But you know what? As I preach, I'm going to get thirsty again. But let me tell you, folks, the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's a river of living water that once you drink from that river, you're never going to be thirsty again. Amen. If NASA knew what the Holy Ghost is, they wouldn't be looking on Mars for water. Amen. Because they would have found the living water. I'm not looking for life anywhere else. I found life. It's right here at the altar of God. Amen. Full of the Holy Ghost, dancing in the Spirit. Speaking in other tongues. Hallelujah. Oh, give me the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, the next thing at this banquet, folks, you got the water. Amen. You've got that living water that's going to satisfy your thirst. Amen. And then there's wine. Amen. Oh, buddy. Pentecostal preachers preaching about wine. Amen. Psalm 104, 14 and 15 says this, he, God, causes the grass to grow for the cattle and the herb for the service of man that he may bring forth fruit out of the earth and wine that maketh glad the heart of man. Amen. Wine, it's about gladness. Amen. It's about joy. Amen. And wine, when you look in the scripture, amen, that's about gladness. It's about celebration. It's about singing and shouting and joy. Isaiah 16.10 illustrates God's judgment on Moab. Amen. And his judgment was aimed at their vineyards. And gladness is taken away and joy out of the plentiful field and in the vineyards there shall be no singing. Neither shall there be shouting and the treaders shall tread out no wine in their presses. I have made their vintage shouting to cease. 
Amen. When God was looking to put judgment on a worldly kingdom, he said, you know what? We're taking away your joy. Amen. The gladness is going to stop. The joy is going to come out of the fields. The singing is going to come out of the vineyards. There's no. There's going to be no shouting at the wine press. Amen. But let me tell you, one of the blessings at God's banquet is wine. Amen. I said one of the blessings at this heavenly banquet that you have been invited to is joy and gladness and celebration. Jesus' first miracle, you know what it was? What did he do? Turn the water into wine. John 2, 6 through 10. Amen. I I won't read it, but, you know, they're, they're at this wedding. And Mary comes up to Jesus and says, they've run out of wine. And Jesus says, well, what does that have to do with me? And Mary said, looks to the servant says, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And so Jesus, uh, Jesus tells them to fill those water pots up with water. And they were the water pots that were used for purifying. This, these were the water pots that they had washed their hands and washed their face. And, and they had purified themselves ahead of this celebration. Jesus said, take those pots, those purification, that purification water, fill it up to the brim. And draw it out and take it to the governor of the feast. And that's what they did. And when the ruler of the feast, next verse, had tasted that water that was made into wine and knew not whence it was, he said, he called the bridegroom and he says to the bridegroom, every man at the beginning sets forth the good wine, but you've held uh, the good wine until now. Amen. Folks, Jesus' first miracle is telling us something. He turned water into wine. Amen. The water that was used for purification. Amen. The water that was used to cleanse. Amen. Their bodies. Amen. Was turned into wine. Y'all with me? Do you see where I'm going? Amen. The water, the living water that washed you. Amen. When you got the Holy Ghost, you got a washing of water that was by the word. Amen. The first vessel. Amen. The first piece of furniture. Amen. That was in the temple was a, well, was the altar. But then after that, there was a laver. Amen. There was a big bronze laver of water that was used for purification that was in the tabernacle of God. Amen. Jesus said, I'm going to turn that, that same water that washed you, the same water that cleansed you, that took away your sin. Amen. That, that brought you from a kingdom of darkness into a kingdom of light and I'm going to turn it from water and I'm going to make it wine. I'm going to turn it into joy and I'm going to turn it into gladness. Amen. That's why people when they come down, amen, they may come down repenting and weeping but somewhere the repenting and the weeping begins speaking in other tongues and from speaking in other tongues it goes into a shout of praise and a shout of glory because I got joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've got gladness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wonder, has anybody got a taste of the wine of celebration? Amen. That Holy Spirit of gladness. Amen. David understood something about it when he wrote in Psalms 51 and 11. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Amen. And uphold me with thy free spirit. David understood after he sinned, after he fell, he understood that he needed a restoration of joy. Come on. When Nathan turned around and pointed the finger at David and said, David, you're the man. Amen. David, was his heart smote him. Amen. He repented, and he suffered some consequences because of it. Amen. And, and somewhere during that experience, he penned the words of Psalm 51, where he said, Lord, I need the joy of your salvation back to me, Lord. God, don't put me out of your presence. God, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. But God, give me a renewing of joy. God, give me a, an upholding, God, by that Holy Spirit. Amen. Joy comes from the salvation of God. Amen. It comes from the Holy Ghost, folks. Amen. The same spirit that saved you is the spirit that brings joy. 
Amen. It's that heavenly wine. Ephesians 5.18, don't be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Pastor preached about it this morning. Amen. Don't be drunk with wine. Amen. But be filled with the Spirit. Amen. When folks want to drink, oh, amen, they, they, they drink because, man, I, gotta, I need some joy. There's even a scripture about it in Proverbs. I didn't write it down, but it talked about, you know, the one who is distressed, give them wine, and the one who is perishing, give them strong drink. Amen. And it was talking about the, uh, in, in Proverbs, it's actually kind of negative. It's talking about the despair that they have, and it says, you know, give them a little wine to, to just cover up that, that despair. Amen. But you know what? To the one who is perishing, let's give them the, the wine of the Spirit. Amen. If you're in distress in your heart, amen, you just need a refilling and a renewing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I said, if you're fighting oppression, if you're fighting depression, amen, if you're cast down, amen, you need a renewing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You need to get drunk with the Holy Ghost all over again. Hallelujah. You know, the thing about, the thing about uh, substances, wine, drugs, whatever it is, is they don't do what they promise they're going to do. A fellow by the name of Guy Duffield wrote this, the world's spirits give a lift with a letdown. Isn't that right? Amen. Thank God I don't know about that firsthand. I, my, I thank God for a mama that raised me in church and a, and, a, and a grandma that prayed for me and a mama that prayed for me. Amen. I've never experienced this, but some of you have. Amen. Some of you have. And, and, and you know, hallelujah, that the spirits of the world give a little bit of a lift followed by a letdown. But the believer's anointing with oil and wine brings about inspiration without desperation. Amen. I said when, you, when you've spent a Sunday night shouting around the front and getting a, a refilling and a renewing of the Holy Ghost, amen, you might get so drunk in the Spirit that you find yourself staggering out. Amen. Kind of like the dog when he jumped out this morning and looked at me like, what's going on with you? Some, some you? some people may look at you like, what has got into them? But you know what? Amen. You, you got drunk in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And when you walk home, there's not going to be any regrets. Amen. There's no letdown with the Spirit of God. There's no desperation afterwards saying, man, I thought I got what I needed, but I didn't. Amen. I, I, I forgot about my troubles for a moment, but they're still here. No, when you, when you get a good dose of the Holy Ghost, folks, amen, you get a joy that is enduring. Amen. You get a gladness that's going to carry you through every trial, over every mountain, through every valley. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody. We're shouting from here to glory. Amen. I don't care if it's a good day or a bad day. I'm shouting from here to glory. I'm dancing from here to glory because I'm drinking from that new wine. Hallelujah. The wine of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God with joy. God, I need a fresh drink tonight. I don't know about you. Amen. I want a fresh touch. I want a fresh refilling. I want a fresh renewing. Amen. I'm not too old. Amen. And I'm not too experienced. Amen. In this thing where I don't want a fresh touch of the Holy Ghost, where I don't want those tongues to bubble up out of me as God refreshes and renews my spirit. Amen. I'm not too, I'm not to the place where I don't want to just fall on my face before him and bask in his presence. I need it. Right. Hallelujah. We need it. Amen. Hallelujah. That's where joy is. Amen. With joy, you're going to draw water from the wells of salvation. Amen. With joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. First Peter, he said, it is we rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. It's because of the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's because of that spirit that is within us. Amen. Now, the third thing in this banquet, milk. Amen. We've got water. Thank God that living water that brings salvation. Amen. We've got wine. Amen. That gladdens our heart, puts a smile on our face, a shout in our footstep, puts a song in our heart. Amen. And now we've got milk. Amen. Milk is basic nourishment, folks. Amen. Milk is the baby's food. Amen. Milk is a food that is fat and calorie rich. Amen. It promotes growth and development of the immune system. And it promotes strength. It symbolizes riches and prosperity. Amen. The Bible said when he was going to take the children of Israel out of Egypt, he said, I'm going to take you into a land flowing with milk and honey. 
Amen. He said, I'm going to take you into a place where there's richness, where there's fat, where there's calories, where there's nourishment. Amen. Where all you have to do is look around and there's, and there's the milk to help you grow. Amen. Milk to help your immune system. Milk to make you strong. Amen. Folks, we need the milk. Amen. First Peter 2 and 2, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Amen. Is there anybody? Is there anybody that you've tasted that the Lord is gracious? Amen. Is there anybody who's been around this long enough that you know, oh, he's so good. I've tasted of his miracle power. I've tasted of his provision. Hallelujah. I know that the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. I know that he's gracious. He's slow to anger. Amen. And his mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you what, if you've been around long enough to know how good he is, amen, then we need to desire the milk. Amen. We need to desire that pure, sincere milk of the word. Amen. Another translation calls it the pure spiritual milk. There's that Holy Ghost again. Amen. I said, oh, there's that Holy Ghost again. Amen. What is this Holy Ghost but the Word of God written in your heart? Amen. God said in the prophet, he, he, uh, I, I think it was Jeremiah. Uh, y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, but one of those Old Testament prophets, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, or Isaiah, said, I'm going to take out their heart of stone, and I'm going to give them a heart of flesh. Amen. And I'm going to write my commandments on the tables of their heart. Amen. That was the Holy Ghost. He said, I'm going to put my spirit within them. And they're not going to tell their neighbors to to know me, but they're going to know me themselves. Amen. I need that milk. Amen. I need that pure spiritual milk that's going to help me grow. Amen. That's going to help me mature. Amen. I need the Holy Ghost, folks. I want to feast on what God is pouring out. Amen. God is pouring out his spirit without measure upon every people, upon every nation, upon every tongue and every tribe. He is pouring it out. Amen. Just like the prophet Joel said, in the last days, says the Lord, I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Amen. That's what God, this is the, the, uh, what do they call it? The dispensation. This is the dispensation that we are living in. Amen. And God is dispensing. He's giving out. He's pouring out the Holy Ghost to whosoever will. Amen. If there's anybody, amen, that's got a little bit of thirst, amen, and a little bit of hunger, God says, I've got something to pour out on you. Amen. Oh, Christians that haven't received the Holy Ghost, amen, let me tell you, there's something else for you. Amen. You may be sitting here and say, well, I've been a Christian all my life. If you hadn't received the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues like they did on the book of Acts, let me tell you, amen, on the day of Pentecost, amen, this is for you. Amen. This is what God is pouring out. Saints of God, we got to be full of it. Amen. We may have received it once, but God, keep pouring it into me, Lord. God, keep pouring it in because this is what's going to make you strong. This is what's going to make you grow. This is what's going to help your spiritual immune system. Amen. You know, the devil, the Bible talks about that the devil, he's got those fiery darts. Amen, that he's flinging. And there's attacks of the enemy. And I'm not trying to be, you know, all hokey everything uh, or anything. But, folks, you know, you know that the enemy is out to, to trouble the church. Amen, he wants to do everything he can. Now, I'm not saying that every problem we have is of the devil. But the devil is certainly at work in the world today. The spirit of the Antichrist is at work today. And there are attacks that are going on today. Amen. Attacks on our mothers. Attacks on our fathers. Amen. Attacks on our pastor and his family. Amen. Attacks on our single people. Attacks on our young people. Amen. The devil is out to do what he can. Amen. To put seeds of doubt and seeds of disease in the church. And without that pure spiritual milk and a a healthy spiritual immune system, folks. Amen. We're going to succumb. Amen. God, I want that milk, Lord. I want to be big and strong, just like my heavenly Father. Amen. I want to have strong bones, Lord, spiritually speaking. I want to have a strong immune system, spiritually speaking. Lord, I don't want to be weak and feeble spiritually, but I want to be strong. Amen. Folks, you need that milk of the Holy Ghost. Amen. What a banquet we have been invited to.
Amen. Hallelujah. What a banquet we have been invited to. I want a feast on what God is pouring out. Amen. I don't want what the world's pouring out. Amen. If you want to fill your cup up with what the world's pouring out, you're going to find that at the end of the day, what's in that cup is nasty. Amen. It's not satisfying, and it's going to leave you thirsty and dry. Amen. But what God is pouring out, amen, is life. Amen. Is joy. Is strength. Amen. Hallelujah. Musicians, you can come. So in conclusion, Isaiah 55 and 2 says this. Why do you spend money for what's not bread and labor for what doesn't satisfy? Amen. There's a whole bunch of folks in this world today that are out spending their resources. Amen. On something that's not going to bring nourishment into their life. Amen. There's people that are that are making they're striking it rich. They're making all the money in the world and they're spending all the money in the world on what will never bring life into them. Amen. There's folks that are working hard. Amen. They're giving it the the more than the good old college try. They're working with everything that they have. Amen. To achieve what will not satisfy them. And in this passage, the, the prophet, he asked the people, why do you do that? Why are you spending your money for what is not bread? Why are you laboring for what is not going to satisfy? Why don't you come? Come to me. Come and let me give you water. Come and let me give you wine. Amen. Come and let me give you milk. Hallelujah. You know, the woman at the well, you know that story. Amen. Jesus showed up. And she had five husbands. And the one she was living with was not her husband. Amen. She she was dead inside. She was dead inside. And Jesus said, if you'd ask me, I'd give you living water that you would never thirst again. Amen. You've been looking for love. Amen. And this man and that man and that man and that man and the one you've got you're not even married to him because you're not really sure if he loves you or not. Amen. Let me give you something that will satisfy you. That you'll wake up in the morning and you'll say, you know what? I'm not thirsty for the love of man or for the approval of man because I have my God. I have my King. Amen. Folks, amen. She got offered living water. The prodigal son, he spent everything. He had all the money that he needed, and he went and he spent it all. And at the end of the day, he was left hungry in the slop pen with the pigs going, I'm, I'm hungry. Amen. He was in despair. Amen. But what happened when he got home? Amen. When he got up and he made the decision, I'm going back to the father's house. Amen. The father said, we're going to celebrate. Amen. We're going to celebrate. Amen. He needed that joy to be restored. Amen. What he had wasted and, 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 and driven himself into, the, himself into the depths of despair, God said, I'll give you joy back. Or his father did. He said, we're going to have a celebration. Amen. The woman with the issue of blood, she was wasting away. With no answer. She was dying on the inside. Amen. Had spent everything on, the, on, 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 on everything that the doctor said would work. Nothing worked. And she was dying. Amen. But the living word. Amen. The sincere milk of the word. Amen. That living word. When she was able to reach out and touch it. Healing poured into her body. Strength poured into her body. Folks, you have an open invitation tonight. Amen. Are you thirsty? Amen. There's living water here tonight. Amen. I said there's living water here tonight. Amen. Do you find yourself fighting? Amen. Being down and and, and just wondering what's going on. Like Brother Martin was talking about the cares of this world. Let me tell you, there is joy here tonight for you. Amen. And it's all in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Do you do you need strength in your spirit? Amen. Do you feel like you're hungry and wasting away inside? Let me tell you, there is healing and there is strength for you tonight. The Lord says, come. Amen. The price has been paid. The blood. Jesus paid it all, folks. That's why he said, come. If you don't have any money, if you spent everything that you have, you've given all your effort, you spent everything that you have, and you're still coming up empty, won't you come? Amen. Won't you come?
Amen. Seek the Lord while he can be found. That's what he said later on in the chapter. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Folks, today is the day of salvation. You don't have to wait till tomorrow. Amen. To receive a renewing. You don't have to wait till Wednesday night, amen, when the evangelist is here to receive a renewing in the Holy Ghost. You can get it tonight. But some people say, well, that's not for me. You know, I just don't know if I can believe it. I don't know if I can quite get there. Let me tell you what. In the same chapter, he said his word is good. He said, he said come Let me give. Let me satisfy you. Seek me and I'll be found. And then in Isaiah 55 and 11, he said, said, this is going to be my word that goes forth out of my mouth. It will not return to me void, but it will accomplish that which I please and shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. What did God send his word to do in your life tonight? Amen. I'll tell you, he sent it into your life to restore you. Amen. He has sent his word here tonight. He has sent his spirit to here tonight. Amen. To renew you. Amen. He has sent his spirit here tonight to refill you. Is there anybody that needs a touch from the Lord tonight? Hallelujah. These altars are open. Amen. Let's come. Amen. Come and buy without price. Come and drink from the well of living water. Hi, this is Pastor Kevin Martin, and I just want to thank you all for joining us today, tuning in and being a part of our service. We hope that it was a blessing to you and that you were uplifted and encouraged and felt the presence of the Lord. If you would like to know more about our church, please join us at www.atascacitaupc.com and you will find all of the ministries. You will find pictures where you could take a journey and see everything that's been going on at the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita. And uh, we hope that you join us again very soon. God bless you.